just as we employ thin section imaging in CT scanning, we have to employ thin section imaging on MRI as well. And usually these are sequences that are T2 weighted, that is that have bright CSF signal. The reason why we want bright CSF signal is so that, that way we can see the endolymph and the perilymph within the cochlea and vestibular system. The pulse sequences that are typically used are referred to as Fiesta in the GE scanner, 3D CIS in Siemens, and TFV or turbo field echo with Philips. So you will hear these terms, fast imaging employing steady state acquisition, Fiesta, constructive interference, steady state, CIS imaging with Siemens, some people call it KISS, uh, depending upon how romantic they are that day. But I refer to it as CIS imaging. And then we have the turbo field echo or TFE with Philips. This is a, an example of a Fiesta GE pulse sequence. As you see, the CSF is bright. And if we look at the cochlea and vestibule, we are also seeing bright signal dominating. Now what's nice about this is that we can therefore see the cranial nerves very nicely outlined by the cerebrospinal fluid. So we can see that this cranial nerve that I've, I'm going to mark as number one is anteriorly located. And depending upon whether we're at the upper portion of the internal auditory canal or the lower portion of the internal auditory canal, we would say, all right, well, if it's anterior and inferior, it's going to be the cochlear nerve. Whereas if it's anterior but superior, it's going to be one of the superior vestibular nerves. What's posterior here, and I'll mark it as two, in the internal auditory canal, posterior and inferior, is going to be a portion of the inferior vestibular nerve. So inferior and posterior, inferior vestibular nerve, superior and posterior is going to be the superior vestibular nerve, anterior, inferior, cochlear nerve, anterior, superior, seventh cranial nerve. Uh, you also see on the right-hand side a pretty nice example of the medialis. Remember, the, the skeleton of the cochlea is referred to as the medialis. And we can see this separation into the, this is actually the middle turn and the apical turn of the cochlea with its internal anatomy being, the skeleton being the medialis. We're also seeing a portion of the vestibular system. And in this section, we are also seeing a portion of the posterior semicircular canal cut in cross section. As with CT, these Fiesta CIS turbo field echo scans can be reconstructed in multiplanar view. So this is an example of use of 3D Fiesta to look for superior semicircular canal dehiscence. In this case, we've taken our axial anatomy in the Fiesta sequence, and we've reconstructed it in an oblique fashion to look at the semicircular canals. And what you have here is a reconstruction through the beautifully demonstrated superior semicircular canal coming to the vestibule. And we note that there is bone above the superior semicircular canal between it and the brain, and therefore there is no superior semicircular canal dehiscence in this example. And these sections can be taken not only in multiplanar view, but we can even reconstruct in a 3D format and make MIP images or 3D volumetric images. And here you're nicely seeing that superior semicircular canal, the lateral semicircular canal, the posterior semicircular canal, the turns of the cochlea even. And this is, again, turns of the cochlea in a three-dimensional reconstruction. I want to just point out one other por portion of the anatomy that is important, and that is the spiral lamina. The spiral lamina divides the cochlea into the scalar vestibuli and the scalar tympani. And this is an another portion of the anatomy that is important with respect to congenital abnormalities of the cochlea and vestibule, but also may be part of the problem associated with Meniere's disease. Frankly, with Meniere's disease, we really don't have great anatomic correlation with the patient's symptomatology, but people are looking at this fine anatomy within the turns of the cochlea known as the spiral lamina. Here is an example of the use of cis or fiesta or turbo field echo 
scanning to look for cochlear nerve absence or aplasia in a patient who had congenital sensorineural hearing loss. So this is the example, if you will, of the anatomy here. The separation superior to inferior being the Christofalciformis that I mentioned, and then the separation of the anatomy anterior to posterior being Bill's bar. So again, anterior superior, seventh cranial nerve, people refer to that as seven up. Cochlear nerve anterior and inferior, so cochlear down, posteriorly separated into superior vestibular and inferior vestibular nerves. So let's look at that anatomy doing cross-sections oblique to the internal auditory canal. In this example, we can see this is the anterior, the front of the face is here, posteriorly with the cerebellum is here, and we can see anterior and superior, the seventh cranial nerve, anterior and inferior, the cochlear nerve, and these are the superior and inferior vestibular nerves more posteriorly within the internal auditory canal. Let's shift to this patient. This patient, we don't see the same anatomy. We're not exactly through the same slice. And in point of fact, we have these anterior superior seventh cranial nerve, seven up, but we are missing the cochlear nerve. We have the superior vestibular nerve and the inferior vestibular nerve, but we are missing this nerve, which is the cochlear nerve. This is a patient who has congenital sensory neural hearing loss due to cochlear nerve aplasia. Nicely demonstrated on this cis fiesta turbo field echo three-dimensional pulse sequence with the three-dimensional reconstruction in an oblique coronal plane. 